Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I am looking at Stargan 2 ADA. What is that? Stargan 2 with Adaptive Discriminator Augmentation. Ooh, yes please. This is the official TensorFlow implementation and as we can see from the pictures, there's this augmentation pipeline in the middle there in between the generator and discriminator and all sorts of things going on. If you want to have a look at the paper, there is a link there and that will give you much more detail. As for what is new, there's a little summary here. So ADA, significantly better results for datasets with less than 30,000 training images, which is fantastic because all, all my datasets, all my image datasets have less than 30,000 images. They're all about 2,000 images. So that's, that's great for me. Um, it is a bit faster. Uh, it's got better hyperparameter defaults. It's a clean code base, command line tools, network imports. You can import your Stargen and Stargen 2 pickles and that augmentation pipeline as well as some bug fixes. Now there's lots of things there that you can download, but let's move on to the requirements. So Linux and Windows are supported, but everyone recommends Linux for performance and compatibility reasons. And uh, now you'll need Python, of course, 3.6 or 3.7, and it happens to be exactly the same Anaconda 3 environment for Stargen 2 that works with Stargen 2 ADA. So you can just contact activate Stargen 2 if you've got your old Stargen 2 environment up and running. Uh, if not, then somewhere up there, there's a link um, to another video that's got my file in. You can just, you know, install that and then you've got your environment up and running. So on Windows, you will need TensorFlow 1.14. Uh, which is interesting, and 1.15 uh, does not support the C headers, and you'll also need 1 to 8 high-end NVIDIA GPUs with at least 12 gigabytes of uh, memory, NVIDIA drivers, CUDA 10, and CUDNN 7.5. There's also a Docker file there. Now, what it doesn't mention there is that using the Docker file, you should be able to use the new RTX 3000 cards, the 3070, 3080, and 3090, with the brand new Docker file that was updated about four or five days ago now. So if we just move on to the getting started, let's have a look at what goes on after you've done your git clone and you've condor activated Stargen 2. If you just slap this command in and run it, it should download the met faces pickle for you, set up TensorFlow and generate image seeds for those seeds passed through there into the out directory out. So let's make sure everything is working. There we go, fantastic. So. We've got our four test images. Everything is running perfectly. Awesome. Now, this is on the GTX 1070, but if I had a new RTX 3000 card, then I would need to use this Docker image here. Uh, if you've got the older GPU like me, then it's a slightly do different Docker command down here. You're using TensorFlow 114 GPU down there, but if you've got the latest one, then Docker build Stargen 2 ADA latest. That will take a little while to run. Um, downloads lots of things, build your environment for you, and then eventually you will be able to run the Docker command. Now, it is a little bit of a, uh, a hassle to get that running because uh, you also need to let your Docker talk to your GPU as well. So there's a few extra steps involved for getting this RTX 3070, 3080, 3090 Docker up and running. So first step is to actually get the very latest drivers. You will need the ones from the short-lived and that will need to be 455.38 at the moment I am using. So if I go and have a look over there, you can also use the little GUI and, and pick the short-lived branch as well, but uh, 455 at the moment is the current latest short-lived branch. So download and install those. Uh, I installed them manually. Um, you could also add the graphics drivers PPA and uh, install the NVIDIA driver 455. That way that should give you uh, a set of drivers that will work with this Docker. So if I just do a little NVIDIA SMI there, that will show you I've got the uh, 45538 and CUDA version 11.1 .1 running at the moment. Now I already had Docker installed. Um, if you haven't got Docker installed, you can just apps install Docker. That will get you going. And then you also need, as mentioned, this NVIDIA container runtime. Now this is basically a case of adding their repository and then just doing apt get install NVIDIA container runtime. Now that's very handy because it details everything you need to do here. So you can just go here, usage example there, installation for Ubuntu CentOS, it's fantastic. So there's how to add the repository. So you just scroll down a bit and there you've got your Debian and Red Hat based system. So 
add the repository. Once you've added that, you can do the apt install NVIDIA container runtime. Then you need to do a few extra things. If you haven't installed the NVIDIA Docker 2 package, which you may have already as well, uh, then you'll need to do the systemd drop-in, which just lets Docker run that NVIDIA runtime. There we go, fantastic. So once you've got all that going, <laughs> Uh, then, if we have a little look at the Docker images that I've got already. Now, one thing with Docker as well is I have to run sudo each time. Um, there is um, a page in here somewhere uh, that tells you how to run uh, Docker without sudo, uh, but for the moment I am running Docker with sudo all the time. So as we can see there, we've got my StarGen2 latest. There's my image ID, created a couple of days ago, and uh, size just under 15 gig. So if I want to do my little Docker test, then I can just run this command here and that will do exactly the same thing. We'll just uh, we'll delete these to make sure it does its thing. And if I do that, that will use the Docker image instead. So that uh, scroll up there, we can see it's the NVIDIA TensorFlow 2010 TF1 and this is using TensorFlow 115.4. So that goes through and does exactly the same thing, generates the images. 85, 265, 297, and 849. So that's how you can basically get any command that I'm going to run on my system to run through the Docker command. Uh, just do add all that stuff at the beginning, and then you've got your minus C, and that's the command that you want to run in there. So easy as pie. Fantastic. Right, let's get back up to the top. What other things can we do in here? Right, so we've uh, generated those uh, met faces, and we've tested that everything is working fine. So what else can we do? We can run the projector. So if we scroll down a little bit, we've got projecting images to latent space. Fantastic. So let's have a little go at that, shall we? Yeah. All right. Now let's grab this and we'll throw this in here. Now I am going to pick one of my own images and one of my own networks. So let's go into here and I've got, uh, I'm actually going to pick one out of my own data set here. Uh, let's see what we got here. Face paintings, 512, and let's pick a random number. Have I got anything starting with 2? Uh, yes, let's go 206668. Uh, yeah, that'll do. That's, that's a good one. And my network, I will use my latest one that I have just been training, which is this one down here. So that is training runs. Train A <laughs> runs, thank you. 0028, and that is network snapshot 0116.pickle. Fantastic. So that will go through that pickle and try and make that particular face. Now, this will take a couple of minutes to project, so I'll do that whole time thing here where it, it fades in and out. And that's done its thing, awesome stuff. So again, that is in the out directory. So let's have a look at what that's doing. So here's the target. So that's that's the image I'm trying to make with my pickle. And then here's the actual projection. So that's as, that's as close as it got. And it also gives you a little MP4 of its progress along the way. So there you go, it's, it starts out quite weird and then gets a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Closer and closer and closer and closer until it eventually reaches the full thousand iterations and it's it's there, it's, it's, it's close. It's not very good at doing hats, is it? But yes, you can have lots of fun with uh, projecting. So for example, you could take a picture of yourself and use the FFHQ to try and get uh, delatents for your own face. It's very handy, this version, as you get the, the delatents for the projection as well. So you can use those later for uh, generating your face or uh, interpolating between various different images, which is lots of great fun. So let's pop back up to the top and see what we can do. Now, custom data sets, of course, if you have seen my previous video on data sets, you will probably already have your own data set. As mentioned, you'll need uh, less than 30,000 images in this one. Um, I was using 1,700 for my first set of tests and that seemed to work okay. Um, now, there were a few little changes that I made to start with. Uh, in the training directory, there's the training loop there, trainingloop.py. Uh, I just did a search on and replace on that with the 
on .png with .jpg, and uh, yeah, that just saves a little bit of space. Rather than having a 45 meg PNG uh, each time, it's just a, a 4 meg JPEG. So that affects the training runs in here. So all these files are just little tiny JPEGs instead of massive PNGs. It's about 10 times the size for each file. Otherwise, uh, dataset tool still works. Um, with PNGs, of course, but um, yeah, uh, something for another time to update that to JPEGs. Uh, and if you have a look at the code, then you'll see all the arguments are at the bottom. Uh, creating your data set from your images is pretty much exactly the same um, as Stargen 2. So I just made a data sets directory in there, and then you can run the data set tool. So I'll just run that now and show you what that does. So data set tool, create from images, and that just puts everything into there. So that's where the T records are going to be created and that's where it gets all the images from. So uh, my datasets directory, face paintings 512. So if I run through that, that will go through every image in there. I've got 1,709 it seems, and that will make the TF records for that. I'll just leave that running for a few seconds, but use the old time manipulation as well. And there we go, so that's uh, just added all 1709 images, fantastic. So if we have a look in the data sets there, I've got my paintings and it's got all the little TF records in there. Fantastic, so once you've got your TF records, you are ready to train. There's also a dry run version there, so if you want to see what it's going to do, then you can run that and it'll do its dry run, it'll go dry run, there you go, fine, exiting. Now. Um, this does have this new auto configuration thing, which probably works if you've got really big cards. Um, but if you've got a rubbish little GTX 1078 gig like me, then no, that's not going to run straight away. So if you have a look at that train.py file, you'll see around uh, line 162, the way this line looks a little bit like that. So I added this new one in here, Stargen 2, 8 gig, and basically runs for 10,000 images, um, has a mini batch size of 32, and a slightly lower uh, learning rate there, Gamma 10. You probably want to play with a Gamma and Map 8. And that worked for um, images 512 by 512. That fits nicely into the 8 gig. Um, I did make a little change in as well because um, by default, the mini batch and the uh, GPU are, are tied in, they're the same value. Uh, so down on line 187, I just changed the mini batch GPU to 4, and then I can uh, increase the mini batch to 32. So it's running, uh, yeah, otherwise it would be 32, 32. You could also set it to 4 and 4. Um, it's about the same speed, um, but I like having the slightly higher mini batch. Um, once you've added any configuration lines like that in there, you'll also need to edit a line further down. It's about 534. You'll see a minus minus config and uh, just add your new config line in there. So then when you run, you can select your own config there and that will run nicely. Now, uh, if you want to do transfer learning or resuming, that's fine. You can just put minus minus resume in now and point to the pickle you want to resume from. So that is absolutely fantastic. And uh, yes, here's a list of all the arguments. So you've got a, you know, out directory, how many GPUs, uh, snap you want to change as well. As you can see there, the default is 50 ticks. Uh, my ticks take about half an hour. Uh, on the 1070, so the 50 ticks is quite a long time. So I, I tend to change snap to two. So it saves about every hour and I can have a look at the things like that. That's fine. Uh, you can also pass it a seed. Um, then you can mirror. So I do mirror augments as well. Um, that's just a lefty righty image. Um, works all right on, on the, uh, the paintings. Uh, metrics I tend to disable just so everything goes a little bit faster but there are some options for metrics there. Uh, you can also change the gamma, as mentioned. Um, the gamma, yeah, you'll probably want to play with that a lot. Um, you can also turn the augmentation mode off if you want. Uh, and there's different augmentation modes in there. Um, ADARV um, needs a, a labeled data set. I haven't really looked into that yet, um, but you can also override um, using org fixed as well. You can have a fixed P value there. Uh, and also the augmentation pipeline uh, by default is BGC, but you can also increase the augmentations there too. Uh, and as we've seen there, the resume as well. So here are just some examples of me running through on the uh, 1070. So that, as you can see there, a tick is about half an hour, quite slow, uses a, a decent amount of memory and uh, the augmentation value will go up and up. And it sort of 
hits around 3.6 and bounces up and down around there, which is quite interesting. Uh, so also, as mentioned, you can do the uh, interpolation. So if I just have a look at some of those, so there's the, the new D latents. I could do this, for example, and just do some Stargan 2, uh, where are we? A interpolation. Pretty much the same uh, code as with the Stargan 2, uh, apart from now, um, the, instead of MPY files, we're using MPZs. Uh, you have to import pickle now uh, and init tf. So when you're loading the model, there is now this uh, tf lib init uh, and uh, a, a pickle load instead. Uh, otherwise, it is pretty much exactly the same. So then you can do this interpolation. So we'll start at, uh, oh, let's say we'll start at that one, for example. And that is out and pop that in. And that's that one there, and then end, out, and let's have that one we made just a minute ago, dlatents.mpz, and uh, start and end, yep, and thankfully this is a whole lot quicker loading up, so that just uses the, uh, I'm using the same pickle there, but obviously you can pick a different pickle and see what happens, uh, <laughs> always fun. Uh, and there we go, that will take 240 frames, do 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 do, and then we get an interpolation between the two, let's have a quick look, there we go, so there's one painting slowly turning into another painting, Ooh. freaky isn't it, there he is without his hat, so that pretty much covers it, so that's uh, downloading and installing Stargan 2 ADA, getting started, just testing with that met faces, then uh, also running the docker, projecting images into latent space, preparing your data sets and running them. And uh, and there you go, that's that's it. There's lots more to explore in there. As you can see, there's lots of training times and all sorts of other data sets you can play with. And if you want to reproduce their results, uh, but that is the essence of the paper uh, and the code, Stargan 2 ADA. Enjoy, Rodent out.